Hello everyone and welcome to today's SRT webinar, Study in the Netherlands. I am Marta from the SRT team and we are very happy to welcome you all here today. It is my pleasure to introduce our three presenters for today. So we have a Norche de Cort from Avance University. We also have a Femke Vandenberg from Theo University and Erna Balk from Windesheim Wind Wind University. Welcome and thank you very much for being here today. So the session will be about uh, one hour long. We will start with a general presentation on a study in the Netherlands by Norge. And then we will continue with the individual presentations from each uh, university. We will also have a Q&A session at the end. So if you have any questions for the presenters, uh, please feel free to leave them on the chat. And we will make sure to, to answer all of them in the end. Uh, we will also like to know from where are you watching us today. Uh, feel free to say hi in the chat. Uh, you can find there my colleague Kalina from the digital team. And yeah, I hope you enjoy it. I don't want to take uh, more time from the presenters. So without uh, further ado, I will give the floor to Norte. Thank you and enjoy. Thank you, Marta, for the introduction and welcome again, everybody. And uh, thank you for joining this uh, session about studying in the Netherlands. Uh, we'll kick off with explaining a little bit more about the edu educational system uh, in the Netherlands and why you should consider the Netherlands as your study destination. Um, first and foremost, we have very high quality education at an affordable rate. Next to that, we have an elaborate offer when it comes to English study programs. At the moment, we have more than 2,100 study programs in English that you can choose from. We are known to have a very interactive teaching style where uh, the center, the student take the center stage. So it's a very interactive uh, way of studying, interaction with your peers, interactions, uh, interaction with your lectures, and there's a lot of debate and discussion going on in the classroom. We really want to engage you and involve you with our problem-based uh, way of learning. It's very hands-on and you actually learn how to apply uh, the stuff that you're studying in your study program right from the first day. Why should you consider studying in the Netherlands? Well, the Dutch are known to be one of the best non-native uh, English speakers. So even if you don't speak Dutch, but you're looking to uh, study in the Netherlands and um, have a social uh, life there, there's no need to worry. Uh, if you don't speak a word of Dutch, you can happily participate in society, make friends, get a part-time job. Um, but of course it's nice it's, uh, if you pick up a few lines in Dutch, uh, but it's not necessary to survive. Um, we like uh, to call ourselves open-minded, have a broad cultural diversity, not only in the universities, but also um, in society as a whole. And we are one of the happiest and safest countries in the world, even though we do get some rain every now and again. Um, what is good to know if you are considering studying in the Netherlands is that there's two types of educational institutions. So we have research universities and we have universities of applied sciences. Today you will be listening to three presenters from universities of applied sciences, but of course we want to give you the full picture of your options in the Netherlands. So we're going to explain a little bit of the differences and similarities between those two types. So the research universities, they focus on academic education and research. So it's very much focused on creating new scientific insight and new scientific knowledge in the field that you choose. It has a very theoretical approach, but you study for three years uh, to complete your bachelor degrees, often uh, followed by a master's degree. In the University of Applied Sciences, we focus on preparing you for the professional field. So like I said in the beginning, uh, the educational style, more so in the Universities of Applied Sciences, very hands-on, very practice-based. It's very much learning by doing. And this learning by doing is not limited to the university only. You also have the opportunity to do internships, projects for uh, real companies, and a lot of collaboration with the professional field. Therefore, it takes you four years to complete your bachelor degrees at the University of Applied Sciences, because in most programs, there's two semesters spread over multiple years uh, where you can actually practice what you're studying by doing internships and have one year of practical working experience on your resume by the time that you graduate. 
Some general admission requirements to take into consideration. Um, research university, the pre-education uh, needs to be equivalent to Dutch pre-university education. This might uh, sound vaguely uh, unfamiliar to you, but don't worry, the admissions team uh, of every university will be able to assess the level of your pre-education and inform you whether or not you meet those admission requirements. In research universities, more often than in universities of applied sciences, grades can be important, as especially when you apply for what we call numerous fixes programs. Numerous fixes programs are programs with limited capacity and only the best students will be selected to start with these programs. In the universities of applied sciences, the uh, admission requirements tend to be a bit more flexible. A high school diploma is in most cases sufficient. However, there can be, uh, depending on the uh, preferred program, uh, program specific courses. Uh, so you need to have mathematics or chemistry or physics based on the study program that you choose. So that can be decisive for your eligibility. Um, talking about those numerous fixes or selective programs, uh, it does exist at universities of applied sciences. However, there are way less selective programs there. Often they are related to uh, having specific talents, for instance, if you want to study in the field of arts. Other additional requirements that might apply uh, is uh, that you need to provide proof of your English language proficiency by means of an IELTS, a TOEFL, or a TOEIC, or Cambridge test. Um, different universities accept different types of uh, language exams, but do always check beforehand if you need to provide such a test, because if you have completed your pre-education completely taught in English, you might qualify for an exemption or if you're a native speaker. So make sure that you know whether or not this additional requirement applies to you. <clears throat> Looking at those two types of universities, what is a good fit? Um, it depends really on the type of student that you are. Completing a bachelor degree in a research university is as valuable as completing a bachelor degree in a university of applied sciences. The most important part in making the right decision is finding out what type of education and what way of interacting and teaching style fits you best. At a research university, we tend to see that students strive that think of themselves as thinkers that like to conduct research. They want to create new scientific insights and find answers to problems they may not even exist yet. Specific professions that you can address uh, in uh, the study programs offered at research universities are medicine, law, psychology, just to name a few. If you are thinking of yourself as a doer with a hands-on mentality, you like to solve problems, you like to learn by doing, you have maybe a, a keen interest in costs rather than talk if you're currently studying the IB program, then the University of Applied Sciences might be a better fit for you. Specific professions that you can prepare for uh, by completing a bachelor's degree at a University of Applied Science is, for instance, related to business, to arts, to hotel management, tourism, physiotherapy, Again, just to name a few of the many options that you have. Practical matters, also very important to um, assess the feasibility of your plan to study in the Netherlands. Tuition fees in the Netherlands in general for public institutions are the same for students with an EU uh, and non-EU, uh, with an EU uh, citizenship. So if you enroll in a public university um, in the year 2023, 2024, you will pay 2,314 euros for one academic year. In the first year, you will get 50% discount uh, and you will pay the full amount in the following years. If you have a non-EU nationality, the tuition fees are higher and they vary from program to program and even from university to university. So it varies between 6,000 and 15,000 euros a year um, if you are a non-EU student. The reason for this difference is, is that uh, Dutch public universities and universities of applied sciences, they receive subsidy from the Dutch government for every EU citizen that studies within the Netherlands. However, this does not apply to non-European citizens. There's also a distinction, like I said, between public and private universities and private universities. They also set their own tuition fees on an annual basis, and this might be higher than what you see here. 
living expenses, just to give you a general impression. Again, this also depends on the place where you live. Is it a big city? Is it a smaller city? Uh, but just to give you an average estimation. You need to think of your expenses for housing anywhere between 300 and, 50 and 700 euros a month for rent including bills, depends a little bit on the type of the room that you're able to secure uh, and how central the location uh, will be. Foods, transportation, insurance and healthcare. If you want to take on a student job in the Netherlands, it's required to take out Dutch healthcare, sports and social activities and other expenses. All in all, you need to think of 700 between 1300 euros a month. How to apply. If you found uh, your program and you're ready to apply, um, there is uh, a step that everyone needs to take that wants to study in the Netherlands. And this is uh, finding out your application deadline. Again, very important because this can vary from university to university. Check the admission requirements and see what documents you need to provide. This is often listed on each and everyone's uh, university website. You start your application in study link. Here you provide your personal information, your information about your pre-education and you select the university and the study program of your preference. Um, based on that initial application, the university of your choice will get a notification and they will get in touch to inform you about the next steps of the application procedure. The application procedure will involve you either sending or uploading application documents. Some universities might have an intake interview or a matching day on site. And other practical matters that you need to arrange as part of the application procedure is making sure that you either grant authorization or pay your tuition fees and you need to make your housing arrangements beforehand. Other topics, housing, I already briefly mentioned it. Um, it's not easy in the Netherlands to find accommodation. Most universities do not offer accommodation on campus. They might have uh, some um, accommodation available. However, the rooms that they have available, the amount is always less than the new incoming uh, amount of international and Dutch students. However, we do recommend you to use the assistance of the university that you're applying with, even if they don't have accommodation available uh, for you to rent through directly, they can definitely inform you on what are reliable partners, what are our reliable websites, how should you go about it. But make sure that housing is among your top priorities of making the arrangements and making your application. Because even if all the boxes are checked with regards to your application, if you don't find accommodation before the start of the academic year, it might mean that you need to reconsider your start of your study program. In order to uh, get some financial space uh, and have some extra money to do uh, fun stuff in your free time, you can decide to take on a part-time job or you might need it to maintain yourself and cover your living expenses in general. There are good opportunities for EU students if you want to work in the Netherlands. Like I said, all the way in the beginning, it doesn't require you to speak Dutch to participate in the Netherlands in society, whether it's working, whether it's making friends. Um, however, you should take out Dutch health insurance if you take on a part-time job. Again, another advantage for uh, EU students is that you can apply for a student loan uh, via a governmental body that's called DUO. Um, and if you are enrolled in a uh, university in the Netherlands uh, in a full-time program and you're younger than 30 years, you can uh, take out the student loan. It's not the same as a scholarship. You will have to pay it back after graduation. However, you get two years of the Dutch government to find a job, start earning an income, settle in, and then you pay back gradually. You will have 30 years to return the money that you took out, and the interest rates are relatively low. So it is a good option should you need some um, additional financial space. So take that into consideration when you are you know, figuring out for yourself if the Netherlands is going to be an option for you. And I think I am now going to give the floor to Femke. Yes, uh, thank you very much, Norja, for this overview of study in the Netherlands. It has been uh, amazing. Thank you. So, yeah, now it's the turn for uh, Femke to present about the university. But uh, we will start uh, first with a short video about the university.
nice to meet you guys. My name is Femke, you can say Fem, and uh, I am working for a tier university. Uh, I used to be a student myself at TIA. I studied tourism there. So if you have any questions on what it's like to study here, I can answer them as well. I've been there, I've been through it. Um, and today I will talk to you about our school. Um, so TIA is located in four different cities around the Netherlands. So we have our main campus in Amsterdam, then there's a middle one in Utrecht, then we have one more to the south in Rotterdam and all the way in the south in Eindhoven as well. Uh, you can choose to study at any of these campuses. Uh, we offer all of the same courses completely in English. Um, so it's up to you which one you want to choose. I would recommend the Amsterdam or Utrecht one as they're a bit more international, but it's up to you what you prefer. So uh, why would students choose TO? So these are the main reasons why people choose, chose TO in the past. Um, so it's very keen on personal attention as we are a private school. We have a bit more smaller classes. Um, that way we can really focus on every single student and make sure everybody's happy and taken care of. Um, so our classes will be a maximum of 16 people, but the average will be 12 people uh, per classroom. Um, and that way, yeah, we can take care of you. Um, we also have um, lecturers from the industry, so they have to have their own um, own business outside of TIO, uh, so that way they can bring all of the knowledge inside of the classroom every day, um, and yeah, they can play with all of the knowledge. Um, this makes sure that we have a really large network as well. Uh, so we have companies all over the world that want TIO students for their internship, uh, but also for their um, for their work afterwards. Um, with that also comes a high quality of education, which I'll come to in a minute. Um, we have learning by doing, which Norcia explained already, uh, because we are a University of Applied Sciences, we have the learning by doing, um, and we really believe that that's uh, a fun way of um, studying as well. Um, I already spoke about the international possibilities, so we really uh, have companies all over the world for internship opportunities um, that want our students already. And besides that, we also have a vibrant student life as uh, we have our own student society, which takes care of the networking events, but also, for example, an annual gala or winter sports. So we really take care of the fun part as well. Oh, sorry, one back. It goes back. Yeah. So what kind of programs does TO offer? So we offer four different bachelor programs, as you can see at the top. So international business management, commerce, economics, entrepreneurship, hotel event management and international tourism management. Um, these are all in three years. And then we have also a master's of business administration offered in one year. So here you can see what a um, course at TIO looks like. So our bachelor's is three years, and you can see here that you do your internships in the summer. Uh, you get to choose where you do them, for what company. Uh, and as you can see at the bottom, it's the master's of business administration in one year. Um, so if you want, you can either do a, a four year course and then you have both your bachelor and your master degree. So it's a really um, fast way of studying. Um, so we mentioned it before, it's learning by doing, and learning by doing is very important for us. This is a big reason why uh, students choose TO. Um, so, for example, big projects that we have is creating your own actual business as a business student, um, having to run a whole hotel with only students for the hotel event students. The tourism course are going to um, create their own trips and try to sell them. Um, and then we also, of course, have... Um, the sales weeks for the commerce economic students and all of these projects are competitions between our campuses to see which students is doing the best um, and that way you're incorporated with the actual working field uh, already so it's a really cool way of studying uh, where, are, where are our students coming from? So right now you can see there's many dots. I have to add even more dots already to the card. Uh, so we have students coming from all over the world, which means if you come to study with us, you will not be the only international student. Um, and we would love to have, of course, many, many more. Uh, at TIO it's very important that you're not just a number, so we uh, have the small classes and we really take care of every single person. So as you can see at the bottom, these are the campus managers. Uh, it's a walk-in policy, so you can really go up to them. If you're missing home, maybe you need some tips on studying for your marketing exam, they will be there to help you and guide you through your time at TIO. 
uh, as well as your own personal study coach. So we have a personal study coach devoted for international students um, who will take care of the whole homesick process as well and make sure that you have a great time uh, when you study in the Netherlands. Um, so we have requirements for our university that are for international students. I put some down in the examples, uh, but feel free to always send your diploma to us so we can check uh, before you apply if it's a possibility. Um, but it should be an equivalent to a Dutch higher education diploma and in according that with an English test. Uh, if you did the full IB program in English, then you're exempted from the English test. Um, and otherwise, we ask the, Eng the IELTS TOEFL or a Cambridge exam. Um, so uh, because we're a private school, we are, have a bit more higher fees than the average general schools in the Netherlands. Uh, but that's also because we offer the personal uh, touch and uh, yeah, you can study fast track with us as well. Um, so our annual tuition fee is 22,350 euros, which you could pay in 12 installments. So you don't have to worry about paying it all at once. That makes it a lot easier. Uh, this is the same for Dutch students, same for international students. Um, so it's the same for everybody. So you don't have to worry about any additional costs. Um, so our admissions procedure is a bit different than Norcia explained, uh, because for TU you don't apply uh, through StudyLink, but you apply directly on our own website. Um, they do that by uh, listing your uh, chosen program, then submitting your documents per email to us, so your diploma and your English test. Uh, we do a small online intake interview just to check, are you going to be happy in the Netherlands? Uh, do you need anything else? Um, can we help you with anything beforehand? And if you are a non-EU student, we have a package fee for you guys because TO will arrange your visa, your housing and insurance for you. So you don't have to worry about not having a home when you come to the Netherlands. For non-EU students, we have housing available always. Um, and then we will start your visa process for you. Uh, at the bottom, you can see our deadlines. So our deadlines are September and January. Uh, for non-EU students, it's the 15th of June and the 15th of October, because we want to make sure that we can arrange your visa in time. Um, the EU students can apply even up to the first day of school. Um, so yeah, feel free to always apply and you can always connect with me um, to ask me any questions. Uh, this is some like a bit of a summarization of what I just mentioned. So Tia really leads the way. Uh, we're the number one small educator of the Netherlands. So we're really happy with that. Um, and yeah, we're doing really well. Uh, and we would love to have many more students in the future. Uh, feel free to contact us as well. So we have our admissions email here. Uh, you can follow us on Instagram as well. Um, send us a DM if you have any questions. Uh, I will be behind the admissions email. So if you have any questions, feel free to contact me or my fellow um, co colleagues. And then I can uh, answer some questions or give the floor to the next presenter. Thank you very much, Fenke, for uh, this presentation and very important also those difference in the application process and uh, very good this uh, point with the housing. So, yeah, thank you very much for all this information. Mm -hmm. I would like to give the floor now to Erna. Uh, she will talk about uh, Windsor University, but uh, first I will uh, play a short speech. It was my dream to study abroad. I was very enthusiastic about the programs they uh, provide here at Windesheim, especially the internships that are included in the programs. I think Windesheim are focusing on projects instead of making exams. I think this way is more creative. I really like the way the lecturers teach here at Windesheim. They're very connected to you as a student and they know you by name. It feels like it's a very personal relationship. It's professional education that we offer. So we basically start with a project, uh, a client from day one. The students of Windesheim are very competent to work in a complex environment. Life in Netherlands is easy. People are friendly. Most of them speak English. So if you struggle with the language, that's not a problem. And here in Zwolle, everything is just a 10 minutes ride by bicycle away. I'm very surprised and I really like the atmosphere in this country. So as an Erasmus student, of course, during the weekend, we have lots of parties all the time. And sometimes it's hard to find the balance between studying and partying. But most of the time it works well. The philosophy of Windesheim is that every individual 
talent is unique. We invest a lot in the innovation of education and in personal contact between the teacher and the student. Being an exchange student is a truly enriching experience, I think, and will help you to develop a, an independent and global mindset. Winnishheim in one word, inviting. Modernity and quality. Being creative. Open-minded. Hello, welcome everyone, and nice that you're here to listen to the presentation of uh, Winnishheim University of Applied Sciences. Um, let me tell about where we are based. I see the slides are a little bit slow, but we are based in Zwolle. As you can see, a typical Dutch city with a typical Dutch uh, architecture. And Zwolle is based, oh, now it's going faster than I thought. Zwolle is based somewhere between the middle and the north of the Netherlands. It's a medium sized city, not very big, 125 inhabitants. And nice about the city is that everything is uh, close by. So when you come to the Netherlands, you buy a bike, and within 15 minutes, you can go from the city center to the university and to all the places where you need to be. Uh, 12, 12 minutes by uh, walking from the railway station, you will find our campus. It's quite a modern campus. And here on the right hand side, you see the building, what we call our X building. And this is the building where we have our business programs, including our English taught programs. Um, some details uh, about our university. We are quite big. We have 27,000 students and we work together with 300 partner universities all over the world. Why is that important for you? Well, during, during your studies, you will study abroad during one semester. And with 300 partners, uh, there's a lot to choose for you. So if you want to go to South Korea or Japan or South Africa or all over Europe, we have many partners where you can study during one semester. We offer high quality education. We are the number two broad-based university of applied sciences in the Netherlands for already, I think already eight years. Um, in a row. Uh, so quality of education is good. That's uh, based on two different uh, selection guides, uh, which we have in the Netherlands for applied universities. And we offer two English taught bachelor's programs, global project and change management and international business. And I'm going to tell you a bit about both. Okay, let's start with international business. Uh, this program focuses on four main topics finance and accounting, logistics, marketing and sales, and human resources management. So it's a broad program. You start broad and later on in a program you can specialize. So this is a perfect fit for students with either a broad interest in business or maybe also for students that don't know exactly what they want to study, but they want to do something in business. And when you start with this program, uh, you can later on specialize in the field of your, uh, your interest. In year one, um, a typical week consists of theoretical classes, followed by practical workshops, where you practice what you just learned and where you also learn new practical skills. Uh, you have to think about what we call 21st century skills uh, that you need to be successful in companies like uh, presenting, pitching, um, negotiating, working together in projects, so project management, that kind of skills. Uh, besides the classes and the workshops, uh, you always work on a project. So with a group of students, you work on a practical assignment for a company. So you immediately um, learn how it is to work in practice. In year two, you start again with uh, classes, workshops and projects. And then in the second semester, you already you do your first internship. Uh, so you're going to work for a company. As an international student, you will work for a company in the Netherlands. So you also learn more about our working culture, which is really nice. 
um, so that is year two. And then in year three, in the second semester, you are going to do your study abroad. So that is the moment that you can choose uh, between all the partners we have all over the world. And if you, for example, want to learn Chinese, you go to one of our partners in China. So there's a lot of opportunities for you there. In year four, you do your uh, final thesis, your final specialization. And again, you are one semester again with the company. So after four years, you've gained a lot of practical experience and a lot of international experience. And then you're ready to, uh, to enter the labor market. Um, there is a lot to choose for you. So uh, you can choose your own learning uh, pathway. Uh, there are more universities offering the international business program. So it's uh, if you are interesting, is interested in such a program, it is good to look at the, the details of each program. What is typical for Windesheim is that we have a very close collaboration with businesses in the Zwolle uh, region. So we do a lot of projects with them. Uh, for you, you can do internships there, and they also come to us to give guest lectures. Furthermore, in our program, Dutch language classes are mandatory for international students. So from scratch, you will learn our language. And um, that might sound difficult, but what I hear from our students is that's a lot of fun. And it's really helpful because um, it helps you to get around in the Netherlands. Although almost everyone in our country speaks English, it's really nice that you understand the basics of our language. Um, furthermore, personalized, lear personalized learning is uh, typical for Windesheim. We have in this program very small classes with only 15 students. Um, students do a lot of work in small groups and the teachers, our teachers, are very approachable. That's what we hear from all our students, that the teachers are so nice. And furthermore, we help students with student counseling and every student has a second or third year student as a buddy, as a personal buddy who helps you with your practical uh, things or questions you have. This is a very broad program. So after graduation, you have many, many career opportunities. Here you see some options. And as you can see, uh, our students end up in very different sectors, in very different um, uh, careers as a recruiter, as a facility uh, coordinator, coordinator, but uh, also from food industry to software to logistics. It's uh, a, a huge variety of options for you after graduation. Okay, our entry requirements. If you want to study this program, uh, we need your high school diploma that can be um, your national high school diploma. It has to be similar to our Dutch HAVO or FAVO diploma. Um, what is similar is, for example, an international baccalaureate with 24 points, but also an IB uh, career program is uh, sufficient to enter uh, this program. Here you see which A-levels you need if you have a UK curriculum, but in general, uh, most European high school diplomas are sufficient. You can find more details on our website. Uh, if you don't follow an IB program or an, uh, if you don't live in an English-speaking country, we also need uh, an English language proficiency test. That can be IELTS or TOEFL or Cambridge. Uh, and that's it. If you have this, so your high school diploma and uh, the right English language proficiency, then you will be automatically accepted. So there is no um, entry test or whatever interview for this program. Application deadline for EU students is the 15th of June. For non-EU students, the application deadline is 1 June. Okay, let's now go to the other program. We call it Global Project and Change Management. And in fact, it's all about sustainability. It's a sustainable business program. It's for students that want to make the world a better place to live in a business-like way. If you are interested in climate change, global health, uh, pollution, uh, social entrepreneurship, uh, equal rights, refugees, that kind of topics, then this might be a program for you. It's an honors program, so different than the international business program. And here we select the students based on motivation. So that's different. 
This program is all about the 17 Sustainable Development Goals of the United Nations. So if this is really your topic, this might be a program for you. But it's a business program, so you also learn about managerial accounting, financial analysis and marketing. Uh, when you study this program, you can end up at international non-governmental organizations like Red Cross and UNICEF, and you can work for governments, but also for big companies who work on their corporate social responsibility program. And also many students start their own business because in general, these students are very entrepreneurial. Entry requirements also here are that we need your high school diploma, um, here we also need a pass for mathematics in many programs that is already included, but some national diplomas it's not. Your English language proficiency has to be okay. And because here we select the students, we also need a motivation letter and two recommendation letters. And then you will be invited for a selection interview. Application deadline is 1 June for all students. Okay, that was about our programs, then something about our facilities, because we are quite a big university, we have lots uh, of facilities. Excuse me. We have lots of space for private study and group work, we have a coffee shop, a campus shop, a bike repair shop, several restaurants and cafes, and uh, very nice sports facilities, and student counselors, I already told you about it. Then about the costs, uh, when you come to us, you pay the national tuition fee of 2,340 euros per year. That's next year. First year students get a 50% discount. Non-EU students have to pay 6,600 euros per year. For accommodation in Zwolle, you need somewhere between 350 and 550 euros per month. Then you have living costs, so altogether, you need somewhere between 11 and 17,000 euros when you are from the EU and a bit more when you're not from the EU. We do not offer scholarships, but for EU students, it is relatively easy to find a part-time job to pay uh, a bit of your studies or your um, extras. Accommodation. That's an important topic. Noortje already mentioned it. If you're going to study global project and change management, uh, then housing is guaranteed in year one. So we have a room for every student in year one. You have to share a room. You have to pay 370 euros per month. After year one, you have to move out to find your own accommodation. If you study international business, you have to find your own accommodation. Sometimes we have rooms available, maybe next year a bit more than last year. But still, it can be challenging to find something. So we recommend to start early. And as already said, finding housing in the Netherlands is really a challenge. So start early. If you want to learn more, I recommend to visit our or to join our open days uh, next week on Tuesday. We have an online open day, which is easy for you to join to learn more. And uh, you can also send us an email, of course. OK, thank you for your attention. And now uh, we go back to Moortje, who will tell you more about Avans. Yeah, that's right. Thank you very much, Erna, as always, for uh, sharing this valuable information. And I would like to yeah, give the floor now to Norge, but uh, we will now play a video. Thank you.
Sorry, Norte, I think you are uh, muted. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for the hints, <laughs> ladies. Uh, but thanks, everybody, if you're still listening. I am uh, back to tell you a little bit more about uh, Avance University of Applied Sciences, um, where I'm working as an international um, um, counselor and advisor for international students. Um, so if there's anything that you want to know more, this is the time uh, for you to find out and for me to explain. Mm -hmm. Um, so some facts and figures about the university. Uh, we are based in the south of the Netherlands in the cities Breda and Zertogenbosch. Uh, that is a little under an hour away by train from our capital Amsterdam. And in those two cities, we teach our international bachelor and master degree programs. Today, I will show you more about the bachelor programs that we have on offer. We are a big university. We have over 35,000 uh, students. However, the international community is relatively close knit with under uh, 1,000 international students, but altogether they make up for 80 different uh, student nationalities. And one of the reasons for this diversity is that we also have quite some exchange opportunities. Uh, as you can see, we have 250 international partners in 50 different countries, which means that we do welcome a lot of international students every year, but it also gives you a great opportunity as a bachelor student to get some international experience while you are studying with us. You see a few other campus cities listed here as well. However, like I said, um, those are only relevant for students studying in Dutch. Um, to give you an impression of our campus, this is uh, campuses that we have in the city of Breda. In every campus city, we have multiple buildings, and depending on the study program that you choose, you will be based in one of those campus buildings. So normally, you don't have to commute between buildings, definitely not between cities. And if you have to commute uh, between buildings, it's only a five-minute walk away often. Um, some other facilities, um, independent of the program that you choose and the campus city that you will be based in, you always have excellent uh, uh, access to excellent facilities. So we have our uh, Explorer or library where you have workspaces for students to either study individually or work together on their joint uh, projects. We have canteens in every building where you can get a cup of coffee and a quick snack or even a warm meal if you want to pull an all-nighter in the library. If you're going to get fed up with the coffee of the canteen, we have our own Starbucks and there's other facilities like our entrepreneurship center if you want to set up your own uh, business while you're still a student or research laboratories if you choose to study one of our tech programs in environmental science or industrial engineering. So why should you consider studying in advance? Um, three important reasons, if you ask me, our international focus, the practice-based education, and our personal approach. With international focus, we do not mean that you study in English only. It means that you will become part of an international community of students and lecturers from all over the world. And they bring in their international experience and international work experience into the classroom. All the projects that you do in your study program will always be related to internationally operating organizations. And next to that, there's always room for uh, intercultural communication, awareness and skills so that we learn you from the get go how to develop yourself in uh, a global um, environment. Practice-based education, you heard us speak about it quite elaborately already, but for Avance it means that there is one year dedicated out of the four years that you study with us to practice-based education in the form of teamwork, problem solving, learning by doing, but more specifically internships and real cases for real companies right from the day that you start with your study program with us. So two semesters spread over those four years to give you an actual one year of practical working experience that you can put on your CV when you graduate. The personal approach. Like I said, we are a big university. However, we are organized uh, over uh, separate schools. So depending on the study program that you choose, you will be part of a smaller school where you have um, close personal contact with your lecturers and staff um, of the academy. And they are often on a first name basis with you. They have an open door policy. Uh, so you can always um, walk in someone's office if you need any kind of support or you have a question and next to that you all have a personal mentor assigned to you that is there for your academic performance but also for your personal development so should you run into any issues or problems you always have this contact person to turn to with whom uh, you have a closer bond and should be uh, comfortable addressing any issues or any matters at hand with 
Coming down to uh, our programs, the bachelor degree programs that we have at Avance, they are in the field of environmental science, industrial engineering, finance and control, and we have two international business degrees, one in our campus in Sertogenbosch and the other one in our campus in Breda. Don't mistake them to be the exact same programs, just in a different location. They are business, uh, international business courses, so there is overlap in uh, the course content or the topics that they address. However, their way of teaching and their approach uh, to uh, the professional field is very different. So if you're considering international business at Avance, I highly recommend you to look at both programs, compare them and see what is the best fit for you personally. Briefly, some highlights uh, of each program. Environmental science has its origin in natural sciences, such as chemistry, biology, uh, geography, but you don't learn how to apply it um, or you don't study it in the, in the traditional way, but you learn how to apply it on environmental issues. So it has a very interdisciplinary approach where you look at natural sciences, but also management, communication, policy making, environmental law. So it prepares you still for quite a wide array of career paths in the field of environmental science. Next to that, there's a very high demand for environmental engineers or environmental scientists. So with this degree, you are guaranteed of a great uh, job prospect. Industrial engineering and management uh, is a combination between engineering on the one hand and management on the other. It's not a hardcore engineering course only, but it definitely leaves room for management, project management, uh, risk analysis, um, in the field of engineering. So it is very much a combination uh, between the technological side of it and the people side of it on the other hand. The roots are in maintenance uh, and asset management. Um, and this means that you study the technological understanding of maintenance processes of complex technical installations, but you're not carrying out the maintenance uh, yourself. You're the one managing the engineers responsible for these maintenance processes. Like I said in the beginning, we are based in the south of the Netherlands, which is in the heart of what we call Brainport. And this is an ecosystem where all the high tech companies in the Netherlands and international high tech companies are based in the Netherlands. So again, with this degree, uh, you can be um, sure of a kickstart of your career in the Netherlands. Coming down to our business programs, um, our finance and control program uh, focuses on the international financial operations of organizations. So this is a program that is suitable for students that like to work with numbers and have a strong analytical mind. It's not only about making calculations and working with numbers, it's also very much about being able to translate this difficult financial information into an understandable message for different parts of the organization. So you do also focus focus a lot on your business skills, your communication skills, your report writing skills. So this will make you an all round business professional with a specialization in financial operations. Now we're coming down to the international business program. Like I said, we have two. This is the one in our campus city in Sertogenbosch. A similarity between the two degrees is that they both provide you with a Bachelor of Business Administration. In this program, you focus on marketing, communication, and sales. What makes this program very different from the other is that they work with individual learning paths. So you choose your own set of courses and modules based on the interest that you have and the skills that you would want to develop. So it has a very flexible structure also when it comes to the timing of your work placement your graduation assignment and your exchange program so this is a program that offers you a lot of freedom which is great but it also requires you to be a very strong planner you need to be able to think ahead plan ahead and organize your studies yourself pretty well the International Business Program in Breda, our other campus city, uh, again, also a four-year program leading up to a Bachelor of Business Administration, but the focus in this program is on courses like marketing, finance, and management. This program tends to have a more traditional layout, meaning that all the courses that you take are aligned in a way that they build your knowledge in the field of marketing, finance, communication, supply chain management, you study an additional foreign language. Um, so it is all intertwined and interconnected to make sure that you get to see all the elements of doing business on a global scale within this 
program. A nice additional uh, trait of this program is that there is a double degree possibility. It means that you study the first two years in the Netherlands and the last two years in one of the selected partner schools, and you will study in the language of the selected partner school, which will be either Italian, Spanish, French, or German. Um, and by the time that you graduate, you get a double degree. So one from the Netherlands and one from the university abroad. This gives you a competitive advantage when you start looking for your first job, of course. Our application procedure, um, first and foremost, application in StudyLink. As soon as you've provided um, us with the relevant information about your pre-education, uh, we ask you to upload required documents, which are a grades list, a copy of your diploma, a copy of your ID, uh, to do a preliminary assessment of your eligibility. If we see that you meet the admission requirements, we invite you for a mandatory intake assessment and interview. It's a compulsory part of the procedure. However, the outcome of it is not always binding to final admission. It's not an entry test or not an entry exam, but it's meant to get to know you a little bit better, learn about your motivation, what it is that you hope to achieve with the program so that we can give you a good recommendation whether or not the study program is going to be a good fit for you. After that, you can move on, preparation, practical matters, uh, finding yourself accommodation, join our introduction week to settle in and find your way around the university and the city. And of course, the international office is there to help you with the practical matters that you can only arrange upon arrival, such as opening a Dutch bank account or registering at City Hall. Housing at Avance uh, is not very different from the other universities. We do have a number of rooms available for students uh, that are coming um, from abroad for the first year. Um, however, there's always less rooms than new incoming international students and you need to apply um, as part of the application procedure. Um, you get access to an online booking platform. However, the rooms at this booking platform, they're allocated on a first come, first serve basis. So like I said, make it a top priority next to completing your application procedure. The earlier you start, the better. And I would definitely recommend to bet on multiple courses. Upcoming events, if you want to learn more uh, detailed information about our study programs, we have a webinar coming up next month. We have our orientation days on site in March. And of course, there's ways to get in touch with me or student ambassadors if you check out our meetups page or our ambassador page. And I think that brings us to the end of the sessions. Um, and let's see if there's some questions left unanswered. Thank you very much. And Norche, yeah, I would like to invite now all the presenters to the stage so we can answer some uh, questions. Although you have been uh, answering all of them, most of them in the chat. So thanks for that. Uh, still, uh, we do have some questions that I would like to ask you we got some questions uh, related to housing but i think uh, they have been answered also in, in the presentations right it's it's important to to search for it as soon as possible right i don't know if you want to make something about this but i think yeah it, it's been clear yeah i i think most questions we try to answer everything yeah, yeah. Yeah, we also got a question about um, uh, what would you say the daily life as an international student in the Netherlands looks like? Oh, that's difficult to yeah. tell. Oh, yeah, because I guess it depends from, from the, the perspective. perspective of someone living already here. It depends a lot where you're from, you know, there can be quite a culture shock. The Dutch are quite uh, direct and open and most of the internationals have to get used to our directness. Um, we're clear about what we, we think and what we say. That is something new, but uh, what I hear from students after a few months or when they're used to it, they, they really like it because you know, um, what you have and what people think uh, and that makes life easier um, some people have to get used to the climate of course because it rains every now and then okay that's true but it's not uh, terribly hot in summer that's what i really like about it uh, the country is very flat uh, once i spoke to someone from switzerland who missed the mountains yes we don't have the mountains but it makes it easier uh, to to get around with your bike 
Uh, so that are some things that are different and I'm absolutely not complete, but it depends on, it really depends on uh, which country you're from. Yeah, yeah I can I can add to this as, this as well as I've been uh, uh, living in the Caribbean most of my life. So for me, it was a bit of a culture shock, even though I, I'm Dutch. Uh, it was a bit of a culture shock coming to the Netherlands after uh, living in the Caribbean for 20 years. Um, but I, what I really love about the Netherlands as well is that the Dutch are really, really, really on time. Um, so I've had meetings with other people from other countries and they showed up 20 minutes late. Well, the Dutch will be there 20 minutes before you were actually supposed to meet. Um, and I think this is something that is really nice about the Netherlands, that they, what you, the time you meet is the time they will be there. Um, and they're really open, they're really nice. They will be uh, welcome to you. They will welcome you into, the, into their family. Um, and it feels just, yeah, it feels really warm, even though it's cold weather. <laughs> Yeah, that's very good and, uh, to know. And yeah, about the time, that's true. I've checked uh, when we have uh, sessions with the uh, Dutch, so that's very good. And yeah, to not uh, uh, yeah lose time of people. So great. And we are having another question here. Uh, hello, is it harder or even possible to attend an engineering bachelor after finishing an IV mathematics course as it is not preferred? I don't know who can answer it. We have we have it here in the chat if you want to read it. I think um, we have engineering uh, programs available, so that might be uh, eligible to us. Um, it is definitely an advantage if you had uh, AI met, uh, mathematics already. Uh, it's not a hard requirement, but it gives you a head start when you start uh, with the engineering program because it centers a lot around mathematics, physics. So if you have a good skill and good accuracy there, it's gonna help you. It depends also on the type of engineering that you choose, of course, because there is a lot of variety there. Um, so it's never a bad thing to have this in your uh, IB course if you consider uh, engineering. Thank you, Norcia, for clarifying it. Uh, we also got a question in advance uh, about if it's possible to study two programs at once as an international student, and if so, how do tuition fees work? I guess it's possible with the uh, double degrees, right? Um, yeah, for a double degree, that, that would be a, a, a construction that could sort it, but if you want to do a double program, which is not uh, related, so not a double business degree, but let's say business and politics or media and law, whatever, there are possibilities, but it normally um, clashes in terms of schedules. You can sign up for multiple programs at the same time at the university. However, the universities or the faculties do not take into account that you are scheduled for another uh, program at the same time as well. So it requires quite some planning on your end and it might also sometimes mean that you cannot take a required class at one program or the other it's not impossible but it's difficult and i would definitely ask for like a tailor-made suggestion with the counselor of the particular university that you have in mind i guess it's similar in your cases erna femke um well, for our university, it's it's a bit easier as we are quite small. So for us, if you do a double degree uh, with degrees from our university, then it's quite possible. Uh, we have a lot of students doing this. However, if you want to do this, we do need to see your diplomas and your grade list before this, because only really exceptional students uh, are allowed to do this, as we don't want you to fall behind on any of the um, courses. So that's why we really look into if this will suit you and suit your way of thinking as well. Uh, but for us it's it's quite doable to do that yeah but it, it's a lot of hard work so really think about it if you want that <laughs> yes yeah, see for us if you want to do it you have to check with one of our counselors uh the uh, the opportunities uh, but it's not easy to do to combine two studies yeah i guess uh, thank you ladies we have here another question are there any programs in which i can study tourism Yes, there are, um, and not at our universities. I don't think Tio also has them, but you have them. Okay, that is better to answer that you. Answer. <laughs> there are programs yeah. in tourism at several uh, applied yeah. universities. 
It's in the Netherlands. Yeah, so we're one of them. We have the tourism course. That's the one I studied, actually. So I'm really glad that you asked this question. Um, so yeah, we have a course of international tourism management uh, in our university. This is our bachelor course. Um, so you can study international tourism in three years. Um, I chose to do that one. So if you have any questions, you can always uh, send an email to us. Um, but our, our tourism course is really uh, broad. So you basically have a business course with a lot of tourism uh, courses in there. So you will be prepared to be able to start up your own tourism company in the future. Uh, you will know about sustainability um, and you will know about gu tour guiding. It's a lot of fun. You will actually go around the city um, preparing yourself to tour guide your fellow classmates. Uh, you will have to set up a trip um, and see it's a competition between the campuses to see which one has set up the best trip. Uh, so it's a really nice way um, to also see the world while studying, um, studying tourism. So if you are willing to travel a lot while you study, then tourism is really great, um, a great possibility for, uh, for a course, yeah. Great, uh, super. We got here another question about the study programs, uh, exactly about the biochemical and biomedical engineering courses in Amsterdam. Can you help with that? I would say, I'm not sure, maybe the University of Amsterdam has something like that. I think so. But you can check on their website or studyinnl.nl that gives you an overview of all the English taught programs in the Netherlands. Yeah, yeah, we don't offer uh, biochemical, unfortunately, maybe uh, Norch does, I don't know. <laughs> No, we uh, only have something that's slightly related, uh, but not uh, completely, is environmental science. But I know they are available, but Amsterdam tends to be more in the field of, of um, arts, humanities, uh, and, and those kinds of programs. I'm not saying it isn't there, but I'm not 100% sure. You might want to look into the technical universities in the Netherlands, in Delft and in Eindhoven, because they more often specialize in this, uh, this field. Okay, thank you. We also got a question uh, related to extracurricular activities. If you can recommend some of the activities that you offer or something that should be interesting to, to help the resume of the students. You can go on if you want, Norcha. Sorry, I don't see the question. Yeah, no, it, sorry. It's because we also got some questions in advance when the students register. They have the option to submit the uh, questions and we are uh, gathering them. So, yes, someone asked about uh, yeah, extracurricular activities on campus. Yeah, so there are quite some extracurricular activities available on campus, um, depending on your own interest. Um, it can be um, based on your own interest as you do for uh, elective credits so that means that it adds to the space in your curriculum or it can be something uh, that is more let's say like a, a board uh, task that you take in one of our student associations where you don't get credits for your study program but you do get experience that can give you uh, some added value on your resume as well same at Windesheim, I think every university has options for extracurricular activities, um, especially in our program, Global Project and Change Management. There are many of those kind of activities related to the program. Uh, so students uh, organize writing evenings for Amnesty International, for example, or all kind of other uh, voluntary tasks for uh, NGO that is very much related to that program, but in general, there are all kinds of activities, yes. Yeah, for us as well, we have some uh, extracurricular activities. Uh, we do some sports activities as well, as we have our annual TO Olympics <laughs> each year. Um, so yeah, you can really get your sports on as well. Um, and then we have the main one, which is our student society, but this one doesn't give you extra points, but it's just for a lot of fun. So doing the networking events, the parties, uh, the winter sports, but that's also to get to know your fellow students from the other campuses as well. Um, and there's options for extracurricular extracurricular activities with uh, student points, um, such as uh, wine tasting, so knowing about the wines, um, uh, ph photography as well. Um, so those are extracurricular activities that you do get extra points for. Yeah. 
Great. So there are many options. Uh, yeah, amazing. We got here also a question. I think it was answered before, but let's uh, also answer it here in case someone missed the information about uh, recommendations for uh, universities to study law in the Netherlands. What can you recommend? It's very difficult to recommend one certain university. There are many universities with very good law programs. So I really would say go to studyinnl.nl. There you can find all the law programs. And I really recommend them to join the online open days or online webinars that they organize to make your choice. It's difficult for me to say go there or go there. Yeah, I agree. I think Erna made a valid point with the website, but a few maybe more well-known um, universities that provide law uh, degrees in English are the Hague University of Applied Sciences, Tilburg, Maastricht, I believe, uh, Free University in Amsterdam. So if, you know, that sparks an interest, you can find the, the links to their respective programs in English on um, studynnl.nl. Okay, thank you for the recommendations. Uh, we have here a parent also, Delia, and she has two children, one interested in studying architecture, art or design, and the other in accounting, and both of them play basketball, and she wants to know if there is any option for a um, sports scholarship. If I speak for Avance, the, um, there's no scholarships available at us, also not specifically linked to sports. Um, and the fields that Delia is looking for is also not necessarily uh, related to the, our portfolio. So I would say, again, study in an L, not an L, I'm afraid, yeah. I guess, yes. yeah. Definitely. So do, we do offer scholarships. We have two for international students, but that not really related to sports or anything, but we can always recommend students to apply for these. Um, however, we do not offer architecture, art or design, but we do offer like communication slash accounting, uh, which is incorporated into our uh, commerce, economics, entrepreneurship and the business course. Um, so that will be a possibility, but unfortunately no uh, sports scholarships. Okay, yeah, and they always have the resource of a study in the Netherlands, the website. I'm sure they can find there a lot of uh, information. Someone here wants to know also how much does an average student part-time job uh, pay? Is it enough to fully sustain oneself? Um, well, it's difficult to say. It depends on your age, but usually students uh, can earn, let's say, around... 8, 10, 12 euros per hour, depending on what kind of job they do. With a part-time job, you can never, never pay your whole studies. Be aware of that. So you need some financial support from home uh, to pay your studies. Okay, that's, that's important to have in mind. Definitely. Uh, we got here again a question about extracurricular activities, but we were already discussing it. Uh, so Eileen, you can uh, watch the recorder, the recording after the session and, and you can find the, the, the answer. So yeah, if we don't have any more questions, I think we can uh, close the webinar. So I would like to thank you very much again to the presenters, Femke, Erna, Norche, to be here with us today. It has been a very enjoyable session and I hope to see you on a future occasion. Thank you very much and thank you everyone for joining us today. Remember that you will have access to the recording of the webinar. Thank you.